I feel like we were in the era that it was it was time for us to break free. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. We broke the <laughs> lesbians free. You broke know? all the way out millennials, Queen, man. Queen Latifah and them didn't do it. The brat didn't you do know what I'm saying? It. it was us. You know what I'm saying? And we went through a lot of shit. To uh, now, it's like little studs be 12 years old, just looking like me. Look, like, at 12. I wish I, I could have realized that. identity at 12. Yes, you know what I'm saying? What's up, everybody, and welcome to the Queerly Black Show. I'm your host, Ashley, and I'm so happy you came by. The Queerly Black Show aims to normalize the everyday existence of black LGBTQIA plus individuals through an interview style series with regular folks like you and me. So every week, a new guest shares their story and unique perspective on their existence as an LGBTQIA plus individual. Thank you for tuning in and make sure you subscribe, download, set your reminders to the podcast so you never miss an episode. Enjoy the show. Welcome back to another episode of the Queerly Black Show. We are here with a very special guest. We got Royalties World in the building. What's going uh, on? Yeah. Nick G, the host, is in the building. Um, so we're going to get right into it. Before we start, we got to establish something. We got a segment on the show called Address Me Correctly. So what are your pronouns and your sexual identity? Um, well, I'm female, you know, um, and you could just, he, I mean, not he girl, her, she, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No problem. Penguin, you know, that, that, that's about it. That's about it. <laughs> oh, and I'm, I'm a lesbian. I'm a lesbian. Okay. I, you know what? I'm getting off the label thing. We should talk about that a little bit too. I'm definitely mm-hmm. getting off the label thing, but, um, I'm a lesbian. I like women. Yes. Mm-hmm. All right now. So let's talk a little bit about you. Just t- tell the people about yourself, your name, kind of what you do. Just give a little background about yourself. Uh, I go by the name of royalty. I am an entertainer. I actually couldn't even answer that question last year because I do a plethora of things. But ultimately, I'm an entertainer. Um, I am a YouTuber full time. Uh, I recently became a streamer over um, Covisha as well. I call it Covisha, but <laughs> I became a um a streamer over, you know, that time and you know, that's about it. Like I say, I do other things, but ultimately I'm an entertainer. Um yeah. I am 30 years old, you know, I'm a good looking 30 and uh you know, that's that's about it, you know. Okay. So you just mentioned labels and like kind of trying to get away. From, there's this very progressive generation and world that we're functioning in right now. Right. What's your perspective on that and and your view? Um, right now me and labels is, it's just a bad taste in my mouth because, um, we are not really labeled as people anymore. You know, I think they've gone so deep into labels, you know, women can't even be women anymore. You know what I'm saying? And that is why I brought the third parent thing to the internet, because I'm just frankly tired of, um, them speaking in a, in a, in a connotation of where we can't just be women. You know what I'm saying? If I wanted to, um, you know, I, I, I called it having sex with a man to, uh, have a baby, which was initially just something to throw on the internet to let them know that that is an option, but for women, I really wanted to see people's reactions. I wanted to see what they would think, but it actually didn't go not with my people as bad as I thought it would, but I have more mature, a more mature following too. My, my following is like 24 and up. I have a couple of 18s in between there, but they, they're pretty much mature. So they were like, Nick, if you want to do that shit, do it. You know what I'm saying? But yeah. it shouldn't be uh, like, like say for instance, someone younger than us, you know, you, you have that motherly instinct that kicks in at whatever age, you know what I'm saying? And you like, I want to have a baby, but you so stuck on the labels and how you got to look and how you got to walk and talk. And I just think it's, it's, it's just, you know, diminishing this community yeah. and as a woman, you know? Yeah. No, for sure. And I, I mean, I, I definitely agree with you. I think um, people, because of the boxes and like, okay, you look this way. So like, why would you like, it's like you and I both, like we obviously both present masculine and it's like, okay, right. but I'm still a woman. I don't identify as anything other than that. So right. a part of me being a woman is exactly what you said, your ability to have a child, your ability to do whatever it is that you want to do um, within your femininity. Right. Um, and I do, I think like, you know, obviously like Damo had a baby and that was like a huge thing because she was 
masculine presenting, but now mm-hmm. has made this transition into, you know, a, a very different presentation. She's still the same woman. Like she she's still, initi- she wasn't initially masculine presenting either. Mm-hmm. At the, yeah, at the very, a, very yeah, beginning. Mm-hmm. She got in a relationship with a woman who wanted her to uh, look masculine yeah. presenting perform, and, and perform masculinity. I yes, call it. Yes. Mm-hmm. And I just feel like she had a, a little gray area where she didn't know what to do because of labels, you know, and mm-hmm. I'm just happy now that she, I know it's not about her, but I'm just happy now that yeah. she can live in her free, you know, she's free. It seems, yeah. you know what I'm saying? At least with that. Yeah, for sure. No, I agree. So then for you, let's go back to the beginning, right? So your uh, coming out story or mm-hmm. even before that, um, what were your first, um, encounters with your sexuality so like you know going all the way back when did you know like oh I think I might like girls I was about I would say like in the fifth grade and um I looked at a girl in a weird way and I hated it because I'm just like why am I doing this you know what I'm saying um and after a while it's just you know when I got older more girls started to be attracted to me when I was in like the seventh eighth grade and then when I got into the ninth and 10th grade, girls was really like, it was more so the girls on me. I don't want to say like, I wasn't attracted to them. Play a play the time, from the Himalayas. You know, I was, <laughs> it was the power that P at the moment. I was the pushing P. <laughs> I is. was pushing P, but no. <laughs> um, I actually was into guys too. And I was trying to force it because I didn't want to make my parents upset you know what I'm saying so I was really in confusion on what I wanted to do so but I will say it started right around 10 and just elevated from there so really uh the ladies were sweating you you was like all right so we gonna we gonna we gonna do this yeah um but then were you were you were you masculine presenting or were how did you how did you what was your uh I call middle school like the ugly phase yeah <laughs> like, for sure because you was, really just don't know because you in between what your parents bought you and like what you yes. want to wear so you got well, on girl bell bottom jeans with your jersey right, you know right. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> so when I got into um when I was in middle school I kind of wore what they told me to wear but I, I would never girls were actually bullying me because I was masculine looking uh feminine if that makes any sense so <laughs> yeah. I, I look like a girly girl but I'm acting like a boy you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying I, I mean I it was people was writing stuff in the bathroom about me you know what I'm saying I walk in it's like Tanika's gay or she's a dyke or whatever like literally those yeah those words, on the but, bathroom wall you go in there right. to use the bathroom and it's like and they wanted gay. me and they yeah. wanted me <laughs> all right but uh when I got into high school I'm like okay I'm I was absolutely over the girl clothes but my parents wasn't forcing me to wear it but at, when I got older it's like <clears throat> my dad didn't realize till I was like in the 12th grade he was trying to buy me a, a dress a skirt or nothing I cannot make this up I was like dad yeah come on now you're you're late I don't want that shit he was so upset about that but I was definitely a girl shirt basketball shorts sweatpants day sweatsuit day was my thing you know what I'm saying um I wear a ponytail or I'll have my hair down my hair has always been this length. So it was like my hair down that length, but I was cool with that. I have a little headband on hair, just be blowing in the wind. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, I, I can never do the stud thing fully until I graduate. From high school. Mm-hmm. And so then you identify, at this point, did you still like boys? I know you said near like middle school, you was kind of like, ah, you know what I mean? I still kind of don't know if it's bisexual or if it's, you know, right. lesbian, what, 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 at that point, did you still kind of think you liked boys or liked boys? Um, I had this guy that I was talking to in high school. Um, he was a, uh, my brother's friend. Well, he became my brother's friend, but it was a neighborhood thing. So I had feminine friends that, that I'm still friends with to this day. I had a little sister. So we all had a guy we messed with in the neighborhood. And he, he was, I was <laughs> trying to make him my motivation to not fully go that route because I didn't understand it you know I feel like we were in the era that it was it was time for us to break free you know what I'm saying yeah. we broke the <laughs> lesbians free you broke know all the way out millennials Queen, man Queen Latifah and them didn't do it the you, brat didn't you do know what I'm saying it. it was us you know what I'm saying and we went through a lot of shit to uh now it's like little studs be 12 years old just looking like me Look, like, yeah. at 12 I wish so I could realized identity at 12 yes you know what I'm saying so um 
yeah, I just, I was trying my best to determine what I wanted to do. And girl, he found out and he was done with me. He was very upset. <laughs> so yeah, that was about it. So your name was a boyfriend. I only liked him. I only, you only liked, liked him. him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Did you, were you, were you, uh, did y'all have like a sexual relationship? Yeah. 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 I, I was never, um, I was more so sexually attracted to boys anyway. And I think it's because I was trying not to go the lesbian route. So I'm literally over here, like trying to please my parents, but I didn't feel right being with a guy. Cause I felt like me walking beside them. is just, it's just like, I'm masculine. And it's like, you got all these feminine girls. Why the, why are you not talking to them? You know what I'm saying? So I never felt right in a relationship, if that makes any sense. Sexually, it was cool because I was just trying to see what I was going to do. But ultimately, it didn't make any damn sense. Like yeah. now as an adult, it, it, yeah. I, I, was, I was forcing it trying to appease my parents in absolutely the wrong way. That's the best way. I could put yeah. it. And you're, um, you, you live in the South, right? I know you live in Atlanta now, but you're uh-huh. from uh, Charlotte, right? Yeah, I'm from Charlotte. So do you feel like in this, in the South, there's, did, did that have anything to do with it? Cause I imagine at your school, probably there's like, you know, people who might be gay, but like, it's, yeah. still, it's still the South. So it's like, what did that look like? It also could have been the side that I was on. Like I was, um, I ended up when I got older, I ended up getting cool with some girls that were straight lesbians. I mean, you would, you would have thought they were boys, but they have been like that. So they had been dressing like boys and things like that. I, I wasn't introduced to that yet. So the school that I was at, it wasn't like that 30 minutes away. It was absolutely like that. So I don't think it's a South thing. I just think I I was on a different side of town. Got it. (laughs) (laughs) Side of town you was on, wasn't quite having the, the they hadn't called on it. Right. Yeah. Um, Got it. So then uh, at the high school, um, you're like, yo, dad, you trying to buy me this dress? I'm not with it. Like, you got to kill it. We're not doing this no more. Let's sit down and have this conversation. I'm not wearing these dresses. It it's didn't over. go like that. It was something right. that so, was way worse than that. How, but uh, basically, How did that I, conversation go without, uh, you know, re- reliving it too I much? Won't, I won't say too much because he don't, he don't like it. He don't like it at all. I think he wish he would have did it differently too. Mm. Uh, so we actually had a little uproar about that, um, about a couple months ago. So what I'm going to say is, um, he didn't understand it and I didn't understand where he was coming from. So I left, um, and I ended up going to stay with my brother and, uh, I, I started working, you know, everybody's nine to five and, um, basically that's, that's when that started. And then I started dressing the way I wanted to, me and my dad didn't talk for like a year. And then finally I came back around and they hated it then because <laughs> not they loved me around, but who I became, you know, and, and at that time you didn't, you really didn't know who you were. You know what I'm saying? Um, you don't, you, you, you trying to, you trying to figure out where you belong is what it was for me at about 18, 19 years old. Who am I supposed to be with? I have girls that are feminine. Those are my friends, but we don't have anything in common anymore because I don't like guys, so I can't talk to them. Um, the other girls I told you that were already masculine, they were so masculine, I was going to get into a lot of trouble being around them. Uh, I just want to put it that way. They had a lot of shit going on. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? So the deeper I got with them, the deeper, the deeper trouble I would have got into. So that's my whole, about 10 years of my life, just trying to figure out where I would fit in, yeah. if that makes any sense. Yeah. <laughs> Which is the process for, for, I think everybody, like one of my other, one of my homies that I talked to, you know, we, we talked about it. She's actually a Delta. And so we were talking about like that journey and she's like, you know, I had, I had, I had so many fears going into the process, but then there were people who at that age, like everybody's going through stuff. Like right. it, it ain't, it ain't lesbian gay stuff, but they're going through their own like thing things. Right. Sure. So it's a tough uh, journey. I think sometimes in in our community, because we have the added pressure of like our parents and the community and like, what are people going to say in the church and like being black, it's like such a A bigger deal, you know? Um, But yeah, so I I definitely, I understand that. I mean, even now, like I, uh, during COVID, I grew my hair back. My hair is usually like this long, like Uh, old fade and everything. 
Uh-huh. And I grew my hair back, so I have braids now. And every time my mom, I talk to my mom, she's like, let me see your hair. Like to make sure I still have it. You know? Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I'm going to put this head on top of it. Right. <laughs> going to the back. So they actually but they, didn't, want yeah. me to, uh, they didn't want me to have dreads because it at the time, especially, you know, guys, I, I think they didn't know which way I would go with my hair. You know, guys, they, they, not all guys, but some, they just have a tendency to just let their hair just be ugly, nasty. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like they thought that was going that route. And <laughs> now they love my hair. They was just telling me, I don't think it'll look right. And cause I have, I have beautiful hair now, but I really have beautiful hair without it being dreaded. You know what I'm saying? I just have mm-hmm. a good grade of hair, but um, yeah, we, they, we got over that fast when they realized the dreads would look good. Yeah. Yeah. No. And they, they, no, they, they definitely look nice. Um, right. Shifting gears a little bit. So you were working, everybody's nine to five. When did you get on YouTube? How did uh, that transition go? I got on YouTube five years ago. Um, I was just sick of working a nine to five, like ultimately just sick of working a nine to five. Once again, I got into some things that I, you know, uh, had I stayed into what I was doing, you know, who knows where I would be today. So it was just more so like, I need to, I needed to get my life together. Also, I got tired of watching my phone. So I I got to one point where I actually seen Deara and Ken do a video and, um, I didn't know who they were, believe it or not. I wasn't watching YouTube. I was probably on Facebook and Instagram a little bit. So when I finally seen their video, I was like, damn, like, what do they do? Cause it's like the middle of the afternoon and they're at home. So that's something that I used to want so bad was to not be at work and be at home or doing something outside in the sun, because I used to go to work is daylight. I get off. It's nighttime. Hated that shit. Biggest pet peeve of a nine to five for me. Uh, and I'm not against a nine to five, by the way. It just it just wasn't for me. I got to put that out there. Be Simone. I worked I worked 117 jobs, okay. Right. And I love Chipotle. That was my favorite job. But um, yeah. So it just got to a point where it was like I'm sick of this. And I seen their video, and I started watching YouTube for a year. Literally didn't do nothing but stay on the phone all day long. Literally, I it'll be, and I'm not exaggerating. Like 10 a.m. and then I wake up. I mean, I I'll realize I've been watching YouTube since like for eight hours. It'll be 6 p.m. I'm like, damn, I didn't do nothing all day. Terrible. But that is a way I learned everything I know today. Yeah. And so then you did you ever did you ever feel like your like sexuality would have anything to do with how people might receive you? Absolutely. How did you work through that? That actually um that, that, my first year had everything to do with that. It was an insecurity because I didn't know who would accept me. Um, but I just, I, I, I just had to go through it. Like when you start it, you got to remember why you start and that's it. So I just kind of had to throw it in the, throw it in the back. And, you know, uh, it actually did me well to, to be a, a, a lesbian. I, but I also feel like that's why I haven't blown up like a lot of others, you know what I'm saying? Because of me being a lesbian, but um, it ain't gonna stop me. I'm still gonna thug it until I blow. One hundred percent. Keep rocking, man. Um, so then you had your relationships online. Um, so what was a part of like the decision for you to put your first relationship with uh, your ex online? And like, how did, did there was there a conversation, or was she like completely on board? And then was there another kind of like, okay, how's this? gonna go if I put this relationship online uh I had the conversation with her to um if she wanted to do and I I asked her she said yeah and the first prank we did she she's just good with getting people's attention you know what I'm saying just in a crazy way Mm -hmm. and um yeah that's basically how I went she she was with it but you know when you're in a relationship and trying to do YouTube it's that's the hardest thing in life honestly because She'd be ready. I'm not ready. I'm ready. She not ready at all. And you know what I'm saying? So that's why I got into reaction videos. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you can sit there, crank them out, rock it out kind of on a solo tip. Yeah. Um, and so then obviously we've seen your journey on your YouTube channel. Y'all go check out her channel, Royalties World. Uh, I think y'all got Candy's Corner now. Candy's um, Corner, which is my, my girlfriend now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Shout out to Candy. Okay. Um, 
So now uh, you guys are, are, you know, what I, I feel is building, you know, an enterprise of your own um, mm -hmm. online. And um, how, how is it now? Like, what are some of the differences between things you might have learned from your past relationship and how you guys function on YouTube to now as a couple? Mm. Well, uh, my patience is, is better. Uh, I will say it was not at that time. Honestly, my whole transition to Atlanta and meeting her um, helped me a lot with, with, with a lot of my daily life. I'm gonna just put it like that. I've met a lot of patient people and I've almost, well, I've been forced to be very patient. So now um, in the beginning, we were having issues with me ready to do videos and she wasn't ready, not because she didn't want to do it because she wanted to have her hair done because she wanted to make sure she looked nice. Uh, take a shower, bitch, relax. I'll get to it in a second. So now I wait till she is, you know, ready. She, she's done everything she needed to do to make sure she's good and we can start the video versus I want to do it right now. Come, come right now and let's mm -hmm. do it. That's something that I changed um, that helps us a lot with recording now from last relationship to this. One. Yeah, that's dope. So we love Candy over here. Um, so your relationship with her, you've been, you guys have been super transparent about your process. And I think that's great because I think people uh, find a lot of value in just being able to relate to, to people. Um, your your video from a couple of weeks ago, um, you talked about Candy coming from a relationship that was a long-term relationship with her ex and they have two children together. Mm -hmm. um, in that, what was your thought process in getting a in a relationship with a woman who had a, ex a past relationship with a man and a long-term relationship? And then, you know, obviously you're a woman. What was the thought process for you in being comfortable with that? Uh, hmm. That's probably one of the hardest questions to answer. Um, I think I just kind of went in the wind with that one. I'm not going to lie. The way we met each other, you know, I was down bad. She was down bad and mentally more than anything. And um, we, we were in our most vulnerable time, which got us so close. And that worked, you know, it was like a thing that just worked. Um, so I didn't think much about him. I didn't even think much about uh, the children because at the time, you know, I hadn't uh, really been around them yet. And also because she was going through what she was going through, they were with him. So I didn't for a whole year, I didn't have to deal with that. Not because she wasn't around her children, by the way, I have to put this out. Yeah, <laughs> Not because sure. she wasn't around her children, but because they were in a separate home. We're in one home there with their father. Um, so I didn't have to think about that. It became, um, it, I had to, I don't want to use the word deal. I had to basically, I don't know, get set in my reality when we started to live together and move into our, you know, our own space um, and then bring the children in our space, you know, full time is when everything, you know, yeah, set, set in reality. Yeah. And how long had you guys been uh, talking or, or together before you met the kids as her partner? Um like a year and some change, but they claim they already knew. <laughs> <laughs> right. Cause how old are they? Um, 13 and 11. Yeah. So they was like, yeah, yeah. Mom's over there. Yeah. They, um, they were, they would come over on the weekends, you know what I'm saying? And I was just royalty, you know, they had actually seen my videos before, so they knew who I was. Um, so it was just more so like I, I was a, a friend of the family at first, but yeah. like I say, they claim they knew. So yeah. <laughs> right. And so then how was the transition for you with moving in with her and the kids? Because, you know, you're, you know, you've been functioning pretty much as by yourself. And so then right. to move in with three other people, how, 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 how did you adjust? And obviously it's a welcomed transition because you want right. to be with the person, but right. I think that there's still those struggles that people might have and being yeah. comfortable and setting into that reality what 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 kind of conversations did you guys have or what was your process for being able to get comfortable i will say uh motherly instincts do kick in that's something that i had no clue about because i've never been a parent before 
And she was telling me even not being a parent, they'll kick in. They did instantly. Um, and then I, it, it, I don't want to say overbearing, but when you're the third parent, uh, you kind of got to know your third parent place. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that is what we have been learning, me, me more so than anything, for the past probably month or so, um, because it's just a certain, it's a certain role I have to play in a certain place I have to be, you know, to not be accepted because I'm fully accepted, but to, to know what boundaries I need to, um, well, I, boundaries I don't need to cross and what steps I need to take, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Um, but the, my motherly instincts kicked in. So I was used to them. I'm okay with them. First noise was crazy for me um, because kids are just noisy, but they aren't. They, um, they, they adapted to my environment and I adapted to theirs and we're good. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, for um, sure. As far as the kids go, for sure. Yeah. So you are, you're an alpha female. So you, you know, you take on that role of like head of household, like, you know, yeah. wanting to move your family forward and, you know, make sure everybody's progressing. Uh, how do you balance that with uh, another parent, right? Because they have, their father's active. So how do you balance that? Like you talk about the boundaries, right? Right. What, <laughs> and I know you're, you're still, there's still a process that you guys are, are yeah. going through, but like, what are, what, what does that look like for you as, as a person who's like, I have, once your family's there, you have a vision like for yeah. your family, yep. but you're the third parent. So you're like, okay, but there's this other <laughs> person I have to consider regardless yep. of how I might feel. How do you, how do you balance that? And when do you know, like, okay, I got to incorporate uh you know uh, my spouse and I got to make sure that the other partner the other's um parent is included in this decision um what I learned is the woman the mother has to handle all that the mother has to make sure um everybody's in check basically the only way she could do that is by communicating and making sure <clears throat> she keeps peace on both ends. That's something that I did not understand at first. Um, it's a certain way as a mother, you have to speak to the father um, and not because of, uh, you know, uh, forceful reasons. You know, I don't want anyone to think that, but just, you know, y'all, anybody that has parents that's, I mean, that are parents that's watching, you know, it's just a certain way you have to speak to him. He got a certain way he got to speak to her so they can handle these children and what they need for them and see that is when you know what I had to learn is I have to be there you know when they need me you know basically mm -hmm. um like sometimes if they can't if they don't want to talk to their parents I know that they'll come talk to me certain things that they want to ask me or certain conversations they want to have they can talk to me not that they can't talk to their parents but see they have a choice you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. so it's just more so like ah, I'm gonna go holler at mom about this they actually <laughs> call me mom so, you know what? I'm going to just go holler at mom about this. Maybe she got a different, you know, um, input for me. You know what I'm saying? I try to make it to where I'm not your friend. Don't play with me. But if you need anything, holler at me. You know what I'm saying? So um, we just have that relationship, you know, and I just learned to uh, not overstep my boundaries. You know, don't overextend my hand. I'm actually glad I made the video I made. I made a video speaking about um, parenting and things like that, because we were at a rocky place, um, recently because of that. Um, but it was just boundaries had to be set, you know what I'm saying? And without set boundaries, it'll be all over the place. Yeah, so yeah. we had to work on times to, uh, get, pick the kids up, drop the kids off. I let her handle that. I, I don't, um, I don't go. I let her handle that on her time. And, you know, when the kids get back, I'm here, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's just, we all just want to keep the peace. So whatever that is, you know what I'm saying? That's just what we have to do. And honestly, it just comes with how they grow. You know what I'm saying? So that's the, I hope that makes sense. Yeah, no, it does for sure. Okay. <laughs> and I know uh, previously you, you kind of had like a little bit of an aversion to having kids. Like you're kind of like, I don't really know about this kid thing. Uh, uh -huh. How has your perspective changed? Uh, at first, at first, mm -hmm. I didn't want to have children until I met Titi. Right. I didn't even want, them. you know what I'm saying? I, I actually felt like I would be 
a bad mother because of mother issues for me. So meeting her and actually being able to, to third parent, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> is actually dope. I actually will be a great mother. And that's what I know now. And that's why I made those videos recently because I actually, you know, I was thinking I wanted to have my own child, but that, that changed drastically when TT started telling me everything that comes with it and all these other women, you know, it's, it's yeah. a lot. And I don't think, and I, I never say I ain't strong enough for it or whatever, but you know, the difference between us and, and other women is like when you have sex and, and, and you get pregnant, you're pregnant. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> yeah. it's nothing. I mean, a plan B can be placed, whatever. But if you're too late, you too late. You know what I'm saying? So it's been so many, I could go back and forth for hours about, I mean, I could, but you know what I'm saying? It's just a lot with that. So uh, I just, I, I don't, nope, I don't want to have it. I'm scared. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna use TT's body. Yeah. Get my egg, put my egg in her. We just, yeah, we're gonna go that route. She's so like, baby, I can have another baby. I mean, if you want to do it, cool. She with it, you know what I'm saying? But if you don't, I'm, I'm available. You know what I'm saying? Like after you have children, it's no fear, I guess, for some. But I, I was going somewhere with, oh, with, with, with women who are having sex with men, you're pregnant. With us, or I don't know if you want to have a baby, but with masculine present women that are afraid to have a child or don't want to or whatever, we got to plan it out. If in the event we wanted to, especially if you're not trying to have sex with a man, and then I learned if you have sex with a man, it's a possibility you ain't even getting pregnant mm -hmm. the first time. So we don't want to do that. I'm not about to keep having sex with you. I don't get pregnant. Turkey bases don't work all the time. I mean, the list goes on and on. <laughs> okay. These are the things that I've learned. Like, right. So it's just kind of like, ah, I don't want to do it. I'm a lady. Yeah. So we, we talked, you know, uh, we talked about that process. Uh, my partner and I, we talked about having kids. And so for us, I have no desire to <laughs> have a child. No. Zero. Well, why, why don't you have a desire? And she's like, cool. Because my thing is I'm, I'm a lesbian. So for me, it was like, I don't care if the kids have a biological connection to me. I, I don't oh. care. I could have, the kids could be adopted. They could come from Mars. They could, I don't care. Right. For me, okay. it's like, I want to rate, I, I want to have children of my own, but right. not, they don't got to be related to me. Oh, I, oh, cool I got it. it. I got so it. She's like, no, we need to control half the genetics. We oh. need to know what's about to come up in here. Wait. So I'm like, okay, okay, cool. So then that means you gonna have, them. okay, right. cool. So, but I always said, I was like, okay, look, so if, if for some reason, and you know, her mother has several children, so I don't believe she has a fertility issue at all. Right. If you couldn't have children, I'll go, I'll go ahead. I'll, 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 I'll check myself in the game, but best believe I'm wearing dresses. I'm wearing moo-moos. I'm not, I'm not like, I'm not, I'm not doing none, none of this. Right. Like, I'm, I'm walking around with like my uh, Snuggies on. Like it's going to get real ugly. It's going to get right. real, real naturally around you. I told her I might have to go stay with my mama for a couple months. Cause baby, I, I already know I'm going to need everything. Mama, please. Titi, please. Mama, please. Yep. I'm, I'm milking it. I ain't yeah. don't have a symptom, but I'm gonna find some symptoms. I don't even <laughs> care. Like I already told her, I'm like, just get ready. Just get ready. Get real prima put donna around here. Put me in a crib, baby, because this gonna be. I'm the baby for now. Make months. my bottle, everything. I am good. <laughs> so yeah. So you guys would uh explore um IVF with your eggs and yeah, have some babies that way. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, it's always nice when you when you have one when one person is like, all right, yeah, I'll go ahead and I'll do it. That's, that is one of the joys about being in a, a, a two what? female relationship is you like, all right, so who gonna do this? Well, all of them not like that. <laughs> no, but see, when you never had a baby before, once again, she would be like, oh my god, I don't know, because you know, for some, mm -hmm. but she's already she has two. That's that was her point. She was like, mm -hmm. I've already been there. This is not <laughs> this ain't nothing, and I'm over here scared uh -huh. out of my mind. You know what I'm, I'm saying? Good. So it's like, why am I even making this hard? I wanted the biological connection though. That that yeah. was something that um I wanted. You know, I get why you're saying that though. But that's why I'm like, I just put my egg in you and I get the biological connection that way. <laughs> that way. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so yeah, I've made I'm like, do I even I don't even want to do the transfer. I'm like, I'm good on all of it. I, I don't want to do it either. 
<laughs> but I, I will just just for the biological um connection. Yeah, we got a light skinned donor. <laughs> so that's how they go. <laughs> that's how they gonna look like me. You a little okay. brown, they'll be light skinned, then they'll not know like how this happened. <laughs> okay. <go> like that. <laughs> look, I have to put this out there for you. We love light skins, dark 100%. skins, green, everybody. purples, everybody. All right. Penguins, whatever. Everybody. Yeah, I was gonna say the same thing. <laughs> Penguins too, everybody. For sure. Well, um, I won't keep you too long, but I do want to ask you uh, advice for, you know, younger LGBT people um, who may be going through their own journey. What advice do you have for them? Mm. Uh, I would say just be you. Um, I don't care the age, the, the race, the time or the place. Be you unapologetically. And that's it. And uh, honestly, if you in your parents' house and they disapprove, it's actually a lot of children who are getting abandoned and a lot of shit mm-hmm. um, because of their orientation. And um, I'm fake it till you make it. That's that's another that's I, I will give you that that advice confidently because it is just way more peaceful um, for you to fake it with them and do you away from them. You know what I'm saying? Fake it till you make it, man. That's that's yeah. the best thing I can say. The way I say it, look, Maslow, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, you need shelter, food before you need sexual desire. Come on, somebody. <laughs> okay. You really so do. I'm gonna need you not to get evicted. Right. Right. Trying to live in your truth yet. Dude, you're not, not just yet. yet. If you're not old enough yet and you can't, you don't even have a pot to piss in and can't even buy your own McDonald's meal. Can't even <laughs> get a four for four. Baby, throw that dress on. <laughs> Matter of fact, walk like a dude on purpose and see how they like that, baby. I'm gonna just get her some pants. I don't, I don't like her walking like that in a dress. Yeah, they change their mind then, <laughs> cause you can't fix this walk. <laughs> you can't fix this walk, baby. Yeah, walk, no, walk you like can't. A dude. Walk like that in your dress. <laughs> see how they act then. I'm like, well, you know, we're just gonna give you pants. You don't have to do a dress, cause that's gonna look stupid. Well, if they parents like, if they daddy like, my mother gonna be like, why are you walking like that? <laughs> and I ain't fixing it because this is how I walk. This is like how a, I walk. That's why. I love basketball when she was at the prom and she was sitting there and she just slid down yeah. in that dress and the guy walked by like, mm, and she was like, oh. <laughs> uh-uh, I ain't fixing it. What's up, my boy? Right. Yeah. This how I sit. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, man. Yo, this was great, man. Um, thank you so much, Neek, for coming on. This is another episode of the Queerly Black Show. I'm your host, Ashley. I'll catch y'all on the next one.